Look, man, I was completely wrong about Marlon Humphrey. Like, I was way off base with this one. Y'all know I came on here and I said it plenty of times. I didn't think Marlon Humphrey was going to play this week or even really for the next couple of weeks. I thought, when I saw, once I saw him in that walking boot, I thought, oh, man, it ain't good at all. But like I told y'all, too, hey, if I'm wrong about this and he ends up practicing this week, it's going to be one of the best feelings in the world to be able to come on here and say, hey, I ain't get this one right. And, hey, I ain't get this one right. Team, keep it clean. Oh, we got we got a little bit to talk about today. Not too much. It's been a little quiet day for the Baltimore Ravens today. Um, but biggest news, Marlon Humphrey, he's back. He's back practicing. Let's read this report uh, that came from uh, our guy Jonah Schaefer. He said, Ravens cornerback Marlon Humphrey uh, was back at practice. And get this. Well, he wasn't only back at practice because... People could come back from practice all the time, at, back to practice all the time, but sometimes they may not look so good. You could tell that uh, they ain't ready to come back yet. But it says, Ravens cornerback Marlon Humphrey was back at practice and looked comfortable in drills. My apologies, man. My apologies, man. This, this, like, this is great, man. Like, I, 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 love, I love this because this was not expected. This is a big surprise to me. It's a big shocker to me. I, I didn't think this was going down. So I'm happy to see that Marlon Humphrey – in the in the boot after the game, it ended up being just super precautionary, and I love it. Maybe he was a little sore or whatnot. I mean, from getting burnt all day with the rest of the Ravens cornerback. Maybe the whole all the Ravens cornerback should have been in boots uh, after that. The whole Ravens secondary should have been in boots after that game against the Bengals. But I'm happy that he's good uh, because Marlon Humphrey playing. He makes the Ravens secondary, even though they've been struggling, even though it's been ugly a lot of times. He helps make them uh, a lot better so that's a, a beautiful beautiful sign but it didn't stop there it didn't stop there because somebody else who i said hey this was the most involved that he'd been in the ravens game in a long time <laughs> and that's rashad bateman rashad bateman who missed practice yesterday he returned to practice today as well so bait was back in a building so shout out to rashad bateman who had probably his best game of the season in my opinion uh, this past Sunday against the Bengals uh, and then somebody else who was no stranger to missing practices over the years so when he missed practice yesterday it was like oh no is it really a Ronnie Stanley he was also back in the building today practicing so this is great like th this is amazing for the Baltimore Ravens like we, we love hearing and seeing stuff just like this now um on the flip side, there were some people who were missing at practice. And the list goes as the following. Uh, Salah, offensive lineman Salah, he was missing from practice. Uh, Roderick Washington, he still hasn't returned. Uh, Malik Harris, Harrison still hasn't come back yet. And then Arthur Millette. Arthur Millette still hasn't returned to practice yet. Like we mentioned in yesterday's video uh, with Arthur Millette, he has until the end of next week to be activated uh, onto the roster. He has been designated to return from injury reserve, but he has until the end of next week to be placed on the 53-man roster. So he still got some time. So with Arthur Millette, there's not necessarily a rush, but there's a deadline. And that deadline is next week, so we'll see what happens uh, as time gets closer to that. So team, keep it clean. Already, we're here at my favorite part of the videos where we get to feature questions from you. Uh, if you would like to be part of that, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons, by the way, uh, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to join the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if not, it is A-OK. -okay. First question came from my guy. Jose, we freestyling over here. Anyway, he said a uh, possible cause of secondary woes. Ooh, let's see about this. We said, "What's up, and Graven? Hope all is well with you and yours. Things are great." Um, real quick, we we good. Um, everything that's go was gonna happen from this storm, it's already passed, so we are good. Um, now, real quick, just a quick little roll call for any of y'all team. Keep it clean. That's in Florida. Y'all let us know how you're doing in the comments. Here. Just let us know. You ain't got to let us know what part of Florida you're from. If you want to, that's fine. But let us know how you and your family are doing just so we can do a little quick roll call. Uh, but anyway, back to the question. He said, uh, I was rewatching some of the All-22 clips uh, through a few of Cole Jackson ana analysis videos and noticed a reoccurring issue in the secondary. Okay, what is it? He said, in the Chiefs game, Hamilton left his post to help at another part of the field, uh, likely following his instinct, and then Mahomes threw that pass to a wide-open Xavier Worthy. Oh, yeah, we remember that game. Because a lot of people try to blame that on Marlon Humphrey. They say, oh, that's Marlon Humphrey's fault. 
I mean, I was watching. I said, it ain't look like it was Marlon Humphrey fault. A lot of people always oh, Marlon Humphrey fault. But then Kyle Hamilton came in and came out and said, Oh no, no, that that was on me. That was my fault. I was supposed to be over there. Uh, but anyway, continue. He said uh, in the Bills game, uh, Jackson. Oh, I remember this one. Uh, that's when. Let's keep going. He said Jackson dropped out of his post to help Nate Wiggins. Marcus Williams was doing the same, and then Khalil Shakir was wide open where Jackson should have been and allowed the single longest pass of the night for Josh Allen, which resulted in their touchdown. Thankfully, this was the only big miscue this game. That's true. That's true. And, yeah, well, I remember that being all on Eddie Jackson, man, all on Eddie Jackson. But anyway, let's continue. He said in the Bengals game, the 41-yard touchdown pass to Jamal Chase was to a wide open cover three zone that looked like it should have been assigned to Humphrey. Instead of being back there to cover his third of the deep secondary, he stayed closer to the shallow secondary to what it looks like helped Jackson cover the tight end. Yeah, Marlon Humphrey, it looked like he was dropping back. But then looked like he saw some, and then he just yeah okay. So keep continuing. He said to Humphrey's surprise, Chase was coming across the field and ended up in the zone he was supposed to cover, resulting in the touchdown. In the seventy-one yard, that play was seventy-one yards. Oh my god, I didn't realize it was that long. <laughs> oh, ooh, that hurts. That, that 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 made my stomach hurt. I, I didn't realize it was seventy-one yards. I, I know it was a long one, like the the one where Joe Burrow dropped back. It was an empty backfield. He threw it right to Chase, and Chase. There was like two tackles missing, then it was off. I didn't realize that was 71 yards. Oh, that, that really did make my stomach hurt for real. He said, um, in the 71 yard screenplay for a touchdown, Williams was playing too shallow and couldn't make the stop because he was at a bad angle. If he had played closer to his zone, he would have probably had a better angle to prevent the touchdown. Based on these findings, it seems to me that the veteran defensive back player or yeah, defensive back players seem to be relying too heavily on their instincts and have been allowing too many big plays because their instincts seem to clash with each other and create coverage gaps. It's like they're going off script in an attempt to create big plays, but the opposing quarterbacks are not blind to this, especially the good ones. Mm. That is a very nice, interesting observation. Um, now, with that, it, that's where it gets very tricky because great players are great players for a reason. Uh, and great players, they can be very instinctive. Uh, and those instincts, A, it could be boom or bust. Well, for great players, a lot of more times is boom rather than bust. Um, so that's what causes great players to be great. Uh, is a lot especially in the secondary the instincts um but if it's causing stuff like this then yeah it's tricky he said ed reed excelled at this type of play and he could trick any quarterback into throwing into his area but we can't be having three one of the number 20 is out there uh, i fear that until this tendency to go off script and pass defense is addressed they will keep allowing big plays that is unless they can better communicate with each other mid-play to make sure their zones are still covered or they can change their personnel to allow less instinct-led players on the field at a time. Oh, that's tricky because you think about instinct. Obviously, Marcus Williams, he's a safety, and you know he loves picking that ball off. Um, Eddie Jackson, he was a ball hawk, so you know he loves trying to pick that ball off. Um, and then you think about just a cornerback. A cornerback, well, Marlon Humphrey, he, he ain't got good hands, but he would love to get intercepted. I mean, that's the secondary's job. Their secondary job is to not allow the receiver to catch a ball and to try to get turnovers, uh, get picks. So that's that's what they're going to try to do. But I see what you're saying. Um, if everybody trying to do their own thing, if everybody trying to go rogue, uh, then it's going to look like th these receivers are going rogue because they're going to be doing their own thing all by themselves like we've seen a good amount of times uh, this season thus far. Um, so I think uh, we would have to take a page out of uh, Bill Belichick's book with this one. Do your job. Do your job. Do your job. And, and it's, it's not so black and white, though, in my opinion, because the way that you've done your job got you to this point, and it got you to whoever you are uh, out of them 11 defenders on the field. Uh, you could be a very, very special player, and that's what why, because your instincts kicked in and you made so many plays over the years, so you're just used to that and whatnot. I think the guys just got to settle in. But what you talked about, communication is key. Communication is everything. And Ravens just, they lacking in that department right now. Hopefully Dean Pease, with Dean Pease coming in, and Zach or just continuing to grow. Uh, hopefully that combination of that and with the players getting better in communication, they can fix all those rough patches. Uh, he also said, I know it's a weird suggestion to take your best players off the field, but no defensive coordinator can succeed if players keep breaking down their schemes and allowing too many big plays. I wish the fans had a way to point this out uh, in case they didn't notice. You just did it. You just, you just did it. You just pointed it out. So we appreciate it. I said, thanks for the long read, but I've been holding this tight to the chest. And enough is enough. We have a great team in skiing. They just need to 
trust it. Appreciate that. He said, until next time, I'm out and go Ravens. Much love to you, my friend. Next question came from Steven. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are safe with these crazy hurricanes going on. I appreciate that, Steve. Thank you. He said, now, that is clear. We no longer have a shot at Devontae Adams. Well, it's, it's probably done. But it, it ain't over till it's over. And I, I did see some people saying, man, it's awfully strange how the Ravens, there's so many public reports coming out about the Ravens, they shooting down this Devontae Adams thing. Usually they keep stuff close to the chest. So that gave me like a little tiny glimmer of hope, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, continuing, he said, uh, now that it's clear that we no longer have a shot at Devontae Adams, do you think there is a possibility we can get someone like a DeAndre Hopkins? I do. I do. I, I think that's a realistic opportunity uh, if the Ravens wanted to go that route. Uh, it all just depends on how they view uh, DeAndre Hopkins versus how they view uh, Devontae Adams. Do they feel like DeAndre Hopkins is somebody could, that could come in and make their team better? He could. He could. Uh, would they be willing to make a trade with Tennessee? I'm sure they would. Would Tennessee be willing to make a trade with the Ravens? We saw it happen last year, so who knows? Um, but he said, I don't know how confident I feel only having the guys we have in our wide receiver room. If someone gets injured, we are totally screwed like the NFL has been since Taylor Swift started dating Travis Kelsey. <laughs> I like that one. He said, thank you for all the content. We appreciate all your hard work. No, you ain't got to thank me for nothing. I appreciate y'all, man. This, 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 that was funny, man. I like that. Um, and I mean, when, when you think about that, think about this, though. Um, you could say that a lot, about a lot of wide receiver rooms. Uh, if one guy went down, then they, they'd be struggling. Think about the Dolphins with Tyreek Hill. Uh, you think about the Eagles with uh, A.J. Brown. In their case, they lost both of their receivers for a little while, but they're both back now, so that's good. You think about the Seahawks with D.K. Metcalf. You think about the Bengals with Jamar Chase. I mean, they got T. Higgins, too. So, I mean, but you, you think about that stuff. But, yeah, with the Ravens, um, I mean, they're they in the same boat. Not that they're, their receivers are on the level of all the guys that we mentioned, but – it would be similar if one of their receivers, uh, their one of their top receivers, did go down. So hopefully that does not happen. Um, but uh, I, I get it. Like, stay ready, so you ain't got to get ready. The more weapons, the better. Um, but yeah, I, I could see them looking at DeAndre Hopkins as a realistic target. Uh, he ain't got the price tag out of a Devonte Adams, um, but he, DeAndre Hopkins, could still play, man. He, he, he could still play. So uh, would they be considering him? I guess we'll see soon. Next question came from my guy, Ricky Williams. He said, hey, PSA, this is not Ravens related, but it really needs to be given a platform to be heard. He said, okay, uh, I'll start with this very important and specific question for all of us men who are tuned in. How is your mental health, my brothers? Most importantly, how are we really doing? Okay, see, my daughter is, oh, she's laughing. I don't know if she's laughing or crying. But anyway, um, my, I'm, I'm good right now. Uh, mental health is good. Uh, I, I appreciate you asking because that's a real question right there. That's a really, really good question right there. And it's something that needs to be addressed. Kyla, she's trying, she trying to make my mental health go crazy right now because it sounds like she's crying, but I don't think she's crying. I think she's laughing. But anyway, um, he said, what's up, Engraven? I know it's been a few weeks since you've seen a question from me, but as you read, read further, uh, I bet you understand and agree to my reasoning. Again, not sports related, but hear me out. Lately, I've been waking up uh, re being reminded daily that my only son is now 15 uh, on his first year of high school, which has presented a new world of challenges within itself. Oh, yeah, I could imagine. Ooh, I know we, we got a little ways to go with Carter with that. But um, yeah, I ooh, that's because what I think about with that, like when I was in high school, it was crazy back then. But nowadays, I feel like there, there's so much pressures that are put on our kids. There, there's so much pressure that and stresses and just craziness that that gets put on kids nowadays. And it's tougher than ever. So as parents, you, you really got to be there for them. As friends, you really got to be there for them. And, and, and they, ju they just need good people in their life because they get shown so much bad stuff, so much negativity. And, and it's, it's, it's just crazy out here, man. But anyway, continuing. Um, he said, uh, this has made me fully understand that as a parent, you have to take a step back sometimes and appreciate what you have. It will definitely open your ears and eyes to the things that we don't give enough attention to, but should. Uh, it is my hope that through this Team Keep It Clean platform that we all love each and every day that this PSA message reaches those of us men with open minds and hearts who can agree and are open to hear what I have to say. Uh, this email is a PSA that I think needs to be addressed more than 
it has even if this is a football channel but at the end of the day just as the sports icons we idolize every sunday monday or thursday it's understood we are all human first uh, and deal with real life challenges that it throws our way that is certainly true we all do uh he said first of all to the men out there doing everything that they need they need in order to, for you and yours to win day in day out no matter what uh hand we are dealt i commend you appreciate this channel uh, and family so much because it takes you away from your trials and tribulations of our everyday lives and puts a microscope on something that brings all of us together even if it's just for a moment sports which speaks volumes in the world we live in today it's the little things yes the little things now for the psa listeners turn your volume up please this is for us fellas he said not to get too deep but speaking for all of us men that are scared to admit it uh, to themselves that they need a helping hand i feel like as men uh, we should take our mental health more seriously i agree and, and something that you talked about being willing to admit that you need a helping hand uh, some people look at it as weak when you ask for help some people look at it oh you need to be stronger than that pick your chin up and what no it, it is definitely okay to ask for help i'm somebody I don't like asking for help. <laughs> I don't like asking for help. I like trying to do everything that I can do, like by myself, or if I'm doing, depending on what it is, of course. But um, I like trying to handle stuff myself. But it is okay to ask for help. So if I if I'm like, man, you know what? I need help. I will ask. I'm like no problem. Uh, but it's important that I, that we do that. In, in so many different situations. But anyway, continuing, he said, uh, most of us were raised to believe that the man sets the tone for his family by being a protector, the provider, and the shoulder of the crown when things get rough. Also, to swallow your pride, never show emotion, which is looked at often through society's eyes as being weak. We embrace this role because it's our driving force, and we are constantly reminded daily that we are heavily dependent upon while we beat ourselves up, coping with the pressure of being looked at as providers any way we can with the, voices, with the vices of our choosing that numb the pain, even if just for the moment. I constantly find my inner voice stuck, asking the same question over in my mind, yeah, the one that we often silence with all the... The people we hold dear to us in our everyday lives that are dependent on us. When is it the man's turn to look in the mirror and say enough is enough and to admit that we need help too? Let's face it. Uh, we are all called upon to be our family superhero regardless. So this question often gets unanswered because we have too much pride to reach out for the help. Or uh, the one person that actually extends the reached out hand, which we often slap away because they want something in return. Uh, our pride blocks us from asking and become, becomes more of a barrier than a temporary speed bump or mainly because the, untrustworthy, the untrustworthy qualities they show when we are at our most vulnerable state nine times out of ten leads us to become more unable to come out and admit to it the world that we are mentally checked out. Mm, yeah, that, that, that's real right there. And, and again, it's important that, yeah, because me mentals are important. And, and I do appreciate, like I remember before, it was years ago, when mental health really started being a public thing, because it's always been there, um, but it, it became more public, like I would say, mm, like six, seven years ago. Uh, I remember when I first heard about it, and when I was hear people, oh, they dealing with mental health issues. I'd be like, come on now, really? Are they really? And and you would hear all these different diagnoses and, and all that, and and I would think like, oh, no, nah, that it, that ain't real. But then I I just didn't understand it though. I didn't understand it. I wasn't like, I was naive to it. So when I started understanding it more, I was like, oh, okay, no, that is real. That, that is real. So, yeah. He said, um, why? Because it's frowned upon by the world who expects different from us. Why? Because we are scared to say it out loud, so we tuck it in like a collared shirt. Or is it because we never uh, <coughs> are supposed to show fear in the eyes of the world? Uh, the crazy part is the superheroes we look up to as kids, along with the ones we have become in real life, can save people from burning buildings and all sorts of danger. But I truly believe the hardest thing for any hero to do as you move forward in life is trying to save people from themselves. Uh, even when we've done all we can, the fruits of our labor go unnoticed and unheard because we're mentally drained to stuff it down and, as they say, keep it pushing. In the end, we bear it all and we neglect the fact that, indeed, we are hurting. Honestly, it takes a lot as a man to admit it. Uh, to all the men out there using this sports platform, just to stay above water, keep your heads held high, even when it feels like you are drowning. Just remember to love yourself first and tell yourself every day uh, you are a better man inside and out than, than you were yesterday, even if your voice is the only one you hear. Uh, push your pride to the side and take this quote with you as we all deserve mental happiness. I, I agree. Let's read the quote. He said, if you feel hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, persecuted, but not abandoned and even struck down, but not destroyed. Always remember, even the greatest heroes had to team up to defeat the greater enemies. Well, that reminds me like of the Avengers and Thanos. Well, let's continue with the quote, the quote. He said, like they say, pressure bursts pipes. Well, that same pressure can consume even the best of us, even if we don't accept that we need help. He said, thanks, Engraving, for the speech. And like that, I'm 